Hey everyone. Last week on my social media, I posted a disease puzzle where you had to name that disease process. And the answer was non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. And since then, I've had a couple of requests for people asking me to differentiate between cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So sometimes the best way to make comparisons is just to do a chart. And I know this looks really busy, but bear with me and we are going to make this make sense okay so when we look at this we have non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema here cardiogenic pulmonary edema here and then the main areas we're going to talk about so one of the things that i just need you to realize right off the bat when we say cardiogenic pulmonary edema we're talking about increased hydrostatic pressures that occur from heart failure. And quite honestly, when we say this, we're predominantly thinking about left-sided heart failure, congestive heart failure, okay? Now, I'm gonna tell you, if you're taking the MBRC exams, you are gonna see left ventricular failure and associated pulmonary edema on that exam quite a bit, okay? Um, whereas if we're talking non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the left side of the heart. What it actually is, is that the capillary beds, pulmonary capillary beds, get leaky. Okay, so an increased capillary permeability. And this is due to some type of lung injury. All right, so that gets the primary cause taken care of. And so when we're talking about underlying conditions, again, that hydrostatic pressure is caused by left heart pressure, okay, so left, I'm sorry, left heart failure, it can be due to a myocardial infarction, vascular disease, prolonged hypertension, for whatever reason, the left ventricle fails, okay? And when we talk about this increased capillary permeability and lung injury, we're talking disease processes like ARDS, sepsis, which actually sepsis is one of the main causes of ARDS, pneumonia, inhalation injuries, maybe traumatic injuries to the chest wall, all of these will make that capillary bed permeable and will have non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. All right, when we're talking hemodynamics, your biggest indicator hemodynamically is looking at the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Okay, the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure tells us about pressures on the left side of the heart. So it will be elevated when we are talking about congestive heart failure or cardiogenic pulmonary edema. It'll be normal, maybe a little bit low, when we're talking about non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Remember, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, nothing is wrong with the left side of the heart. It starts at the lung level. All right, chest x-ray. All right, both of them can be described as a butterfly or a bat wing pattern, which when you're testing, that's what you're looking for, right? However, in addition to that butterfly or bat wing pattern, when we're talking cardiogenic pulmonary edema, we're going to see cardiomegaly, typically left ventricular hypertrophy. That's key to picking up cardiogenic pulmonary edema on the chest x-ray. Another thing we're going to see with cardiogenic pulmonary edema that's very specific are curly bead lines. These are horizontal lines within the lung field that just shows fluid that has have gotten into some fissures of, of the lung, okay? Um, cardiogenic pulmonary edema also may have some pleural effusions associated with it as well. This one, hypoxemia response due to oxygen. It depends on the degree of pulmonary edema. And so this one, while Yes, this is textbook. Yeah, this is kind of one of those kind of squishy areas. If somebody's got hypoxemia, typically when we're talking about that lung injury, there's a lot of shunting going on with lung injury. ARDS, you know, this is a, a refractory type of situation as far as oxygen therapy. However, cardiogenic pulmonary edema should respond somewhat to oxygen therapy, especially once you get that left ventricle pumping adequately again. Okay, cardiac function, again, remember that cardiogenic is impaired heart function, cardiac function with non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, cardiac function is normal. BNP, okay, BNP is brain naturemic 
proteins or brain natriuremic peptides, okay? This is a hormone that is produced by the left ventricle when it stretches too much, okay? So if you've got a left ventricle that's stressed out, stretched out because of excessive fluid, it is going to create more BNP. And if that level is elevated to greater than 100, well, that's your indicator that it is cardiogenic because it'll be pretty much normal, maybe just a little bit high with non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. And lastly, or finally, when we're talking about cardiogenic pulmonary edema, quite honestly, you got to get the left ventricle beating again, okay? And you're going to do that with anotropic drugs. That left ventricle has to squeeze. You're going to have to increase car uh, contractility. You may need to give diuretics, Lasix, you know, you've, you've talked about that. That helps minimize the amount of fluid in the lungs. Preload and afterload reduction, okay? We're gonna try to bring in a little bit less blood to the heart so the left ventricle can catch up. Afterload reduction would be if a person has um, a, a hypertensive type of situation that we wanna vasodilate the systemic artery so the left ventricle doesn't work as hard. And then basically whatever underlying heart disease is causing the left ventricle to fail, if we can treat it, we want to treat it, all right? And then when we're talking about non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, remember it was caused by these lung injuries, you got to treat that underlying disease process. So what we're doing is hoping to support the patient. Oftentimes they have to go on the vent, especially if it's ARDS. And remember, if they go on the vent and we're supporting them through this situation, you want to think about ARDSNET protocol, all right? Hope this has helped. See you soon.